It's because it's hot in here. Don't it's I'm like seriously sweating already. <laughs> that make you nervous? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm super, oh God. <laughs> Great. Be. I know they're gonna use that. They always use those embarrassing things for me. Look, you're getting even redder. Great. <laughs> I've actually, a lot of the stuff I've read about John and Nick both in interviews, there's always a lot of talk about you guys being negative. Yeah, the zone or I, like I think more. it just has to do with like just being honest with people. And yeah. People don't always, they don't want you to be honest really. Yeah. Like they don't yeah. want to hear the truth. They just want to hear what, you know, whatever's good. Sometimes the truth hurts, <laughs> but <laughs> I'd, I'd rather be honest than yeah. be a liar. So, yeah. Yeah. oh well. I mean, I've known you for a long time. You're not, <laughs> you're definitely not a sugar coder. That's for sure. <laughs> no. That, no. Almost, that awesome. almost sounds like racist. <laughs> what? <laughs> <It's crazy>. no. <laughs> you're kind of mad that I'm not a sugar coat and everything. No, I'm not. I'm not at all. So Do you're you. getting all flushed. Live your okay. life. Yeah, so what brought you out here? You seem like you're out here on a, on a new mission. Um, we saw your little just, skateboarder video today. And I just came out on my own. Like, yeah. It's winter back home, not much going on. And, I just want to skate, and this is the place to do it, so. Yeah. Called up Raj, told him I'm coming out. Totally cool with it. Picked me up from the airport, and we've just been skating ever since. Yeah. Did the interview, got it done. Came out today, and been getting, like, a lot of good feedback from it. Nice. Pretty sick. How many people have asked you what doing bath salts is like? None, or <laughs> I the uh, first one? <laughs> Yeah, the first one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you uh, think about ripping people's faces off and eating yeah. them and shit? No, like, it was just weird. It, it, like, somehow, it, like, it lasted for a long time. Like, I was, like, just the way I was thinking, like, looking around, what was going on. Like, it was crazy. Like, you ever done that? So crazy. Were you afraid no, you were going to get so. stuck like that? Is, that, was that, is like, that why you checked yourself in? Like, it was just really weird. Like, I know it wasn't right, so, you know what I mean? Like, I... I tried to like, like be away from people because like I was like kind of scared. I was so paranoid and like I didn't know what was happening. You know what I mean? And you know, I ended up going to the hospital and you know I went to the coma and then you know I came out and it was just still weird. Like you know I was just seeing all these like different people like coming into the room, uh -huh. you know like talking. And, like I saw some of my family. They were asking me questions and like it was just so weird. Like I didn't know what was going on and then you know like as like time went on like I I started to like you know start to feel a little more normal but like still had like a really really lot of paranoia like I wouldn't even leave the house because like anywhere I would go I would feel like everything was towards me like you know I'd walk by if someone's shooting a picture I'd think they were shooting at, uh -huh. at me or you know someone's having a conversation I thought they were talking about me like Anything, that, you know what I mean? That would be the worst ever. Yeah. Did you, do you think that was like a long-term effect of whatever you took? I think so, Even yeah. after the coma? Is it, but it, but yeah. then, whatever, like, my aunt had my health proxy, so she was like, oh, he's acting like this, and then they put me on these meds, that med, like, they put me on so many different meds, and, you know, I'm, like, not even myself. Uh -huh. Like, I felt so uncomfortable, and it was just shitty. Like, it was weird. How long were you in a coma for? Uh, like, three days. Well, That's what they said three days. Do you have any like recollection, of, like any any Out of mental body memories or from like? I don't know if I was awake, uh -huh. but it felt like a dream, pretty much. You know what uh -huh. I mean? I could have been awake while I was in the coma, while I was going on. You know uh -huh. what I mean? I I really don't know, but like what was happening was like I don't know if like my eyes were open and I was with what was going on. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like. I don't know. That's pretty nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I'm glad that shit didn't leave you in some crazy ass hole, dude. Yeah. I'm yeah, pretty... like at least you came out of it kind of normal. Yeah. Kind, Did you kind say kind of, of normal? normal. Kind of. Well, <laughs> Seems pretty normal. Yeah, yeah. normal. So. What, what's kind of about it, Rob? Elaborate for us. Just kidding. You're still rebuilding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, what's it like though, coming out of all that and then seeing like some anonymously written story on ESPN? Oh, dude. To me, it was a weird thing that I've never seen happen in skateboarding before. Yeah. An article like that coming out, yeah. and reporting that. That was, dude, like after, you know, I got out of the hospital and my friend showed me, hey, look at, you know, this is what they posted. And I'm like, dude, are you like kidding me? Like, and then, you know, in my head at that time, I thought every single person in the skate industry saw that story. So I yeah. thought everybody thought that's what happened. You know what uh -huh. I mean? They thought, 
I felt like everybody thought like I had a drug problem and then I overdosed, but you know, it wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. So it was a rumorville, man. Yeah. So that's why, you know, me and Roger did that interview. Mm -hmm. I wanted, I put everything out right on the table. Yeah. Said everything. I wanted everyone to hear it from me. And that's what happened. That I pretty much vouched for it because I've been with mm -hmm. shit. We've been talking about this type of stuff for a long time. Yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. Like the whole yeah. family drama. Dude. Everything. At the end of that video, you were you were sort of off camera, but you were like, "Oh my God, I can't wait for this to come out." Dude, so yeah, because I was. Is that like a therapeutic thing for you? Like you just wanted to get your side of the story out there? Or? Yeah, basically, because you know I didn't know what everybody thought. You yeah. know what I mean, and that like you know that has a big impact on what people think of me. You know what I mean? I want to yeah. put like a you know a good vibe towards people, not like mm -hmm. you know I walk by someone like, "Oh, that dude overdosed," or you know, "That dude's a drug addict," or you know what yeah, I mean? Like. Yeah. I don't like that, you know, I'd yeah. rather have like positive energy and you know what I mean, like. Well, I thought it was rad because a lot of people sort of just ignore it and sweep it under the rug and wait for it to go away. Yeah. Rather than being like, all right, I'm gonna make a video and talk about yeah. it. Yeah, I wanted to do it for so yeah. long, but I just didn't like know how to do it. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know who to contact, what to do, write an email, call somebody, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? And I was like, dude, I don't know. And who to trust. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. I was, I came out here and me and Roger talked about it and then I'm like, dude, let's do this, I'm ready. Yeah. And I think it came out awesome. It did, super I'm psyched. Yeah, it's pretty well put together. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just got the point across, yeah. Yeah, straight and simple. How's yeah, life well. since the DGK premiere? Wait a minute, I thought, they, I thought we were no one in there. <laughs> <laughs> you're the center of attention. Oh, let's switch spots. Right, so you're switch spots. <laughs> life after the DGK premiere. Yeah, after now the video's over. It's been cool. It's been good, you know. We got uh, a whole lot of thumbs up, yeah. and now it's just move on to the next project. Yeah. yeah. What's the next project, DC? There's a there's a secret project going on that Ooh. I can't talk about. I, I swear like to God, I can't talk about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we figured. <laughs> but I'm definitely out there filming, and yeah, there's gonna be something sick. It's coming. How do you guys know each other? Skating. And From then. skating, then we just started talking about skating in cars. Yeah, yeah you remember how you guys met or whatever? I remember yeah. reading some old interview with you on some site and then they asked you who would you want to ride like shotgun in a car with? And if you could name any pro, you actually mentioned John. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I've, I've read his interviews before and, you know, he talks about cars and, yeah. you know, we can really relate because he's into like same style BMW as I am, like the old E30s. and Yeah, like yeah that's our underlying connection is cars. Yeah, him too. Yeah, yeah, I meet him, yeah. I'll see him at Black Box skating all the time, and what do we do? We, we don't talk, we skate, but yeah. we don't talk sh nothing about skating. Right? Yeah, We're always talking about cars. It's, yeah, it's the cars are my biggest downfall, because it's the most fun. I, I could retire right now if it wasn't for fucking cars, dude. Yeah. Uh, I've, spent so much, I've spent so much fucking money on cars, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But I realize, like, that's what I love doing. Yeah. On my spare time, that's my hobby. I chose a super expensive and time-consuming hobby <laughs> but oh, yeah. that's what I love doing, you know? John, did you, you have two goats or had two goats, now you have one goat? I had three. You had three, now you have two. <laughs> yeah, well I had two and then they had a baby goat and uh... Oh, I thought you were talking about a car, man. I was like, when did you get <laughs> a goat? <laughs> no Pontiacs. <laughs> oh, I was like, Dude. Yeah, I had two and they had a baby and then it was just, they need more space. So I gave them to a lady with a farm and little kids, mm -hmm. so. So now there's no goats? No goats. Did How are goats as pets? I'm yeah. oh, sorry. No, no. They're pretty cool. Well, if you have one goat, it's they pretty much act like a dog. They fetch like sticks and balls and stuff. No, they'll just like follow you around, like hang out. They won't be pet, but then you get two goats, and then like, then they start to like want to wreck stuff and like <laughs> be mischievous. <laughs> hey Nick, I got a message from the people at Black Box that you left a BMW on the side of the building many years ago, and it's still sitting there. Uh, that would be my fault. They'd like you to come pick it up. Yeah, what happened there? Well, his BMW that was parked in, the, in our neighborhood, you know, and the association's like, look, this Beamer's got to go or else it's getting towed. So I figured the best place to go would be Black Box. Uh -huh. Like, skater owned, skater, you know, the whole nine. I dropped it off there and there it sits. <laughs> they called me <laughs> thinking that it was mine. On a bad trip. <laughs> like, asking me to move it. And I was like, it's not mine. Yeah, Sheffy has the keys. So Whoa. it runs. Why is anyone just driving? So Sheffy's daily driving right now. Isn't there someone Sheffy's in Carlos that could be using this BMW right Sheffy. now? Sheffy, yeah. No, it's just theirs. I'm, I'm surprised the air's still in the tires. 
But yeah, it's they, on blocks at Blackbox. No, it's good, man. It's, it's, it's a little dusty, shape. but it's still probably there. got some spider webs in it. But yeah, yeah. It's good. You want to go through some Facebook ones? Sure. Okay. We can come. We got questions from the fans too. Yeah. Oh wait, here Austin Robinson says, "When's Nick's next part coming out?" Um, I'm working on it. I've got a few things I'm working on now, so I've been skating the barracks a lot, so doing a few things over there. Let's see, we've got one here. Jack Haberman, or Haberman, says, is there a new Slave video in the works? I'm trying to see you and Pat Burke shred. We all want to see Pat Burke shred, too. Fuck yeah, Pat's He's sick. the best. We gotta get him on the show, too. Yeah, right now he's got a broken arm. We've been working on one for a while, but, yeah. you know, there's no real, like, date set or nothing. We just yeah. skate, get footage, and when it comes together, it comes together. Is it true that at your shoe release party, you totaled your car because you were peeling out? No, it wasn't my car. Oh, that's it was cool. someone else. No, <laughs> gnarly. Tell us <laughs> All right. So it's my pro shoe party for audio. Yeah. They had it at um, K1 Speed, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're already so, juiced from, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> from racing around. So Jeff Taylor has the San Diego Camaro Club come down with like a bunch of cars. We show up like, oh, sick. Yeah. <laughs> Checking out the cars. And then there's this one dude. He's like, ah, come on. like check out my car, you know, you want to go for a ride? And I'm just like, yeah, like, so we go outside, I hop in his car, I, I put my seatbelt on, he starts it, and then, you know, he pulls up a little bit and then starts doing a burnout. Goes probably like, I don't know, 20 feet like this, and then starts going around the corner, fishtails, loses it, hits a curb, <laughs> starts hammering down a hill, oh. smashes into a tree, the whole car comes up, Starts turning over, and then there's like a some small little tree that hit the driver's door and stopped us from going over like a 12 foot wall into another parking lot. <laughs> dude, it was so crazy, so crazy. Damn, dude. And did the dude like just get it painted or some? Crazy yeah, he shit just like won. That? He just won a car show that day. He got a trophy. Oh right? my gosh, that was crazy. He was all excited. Poor dude, I felt so bad for the car. I was like, you all right? You all right? I'm looking at the car like, yeah, dang, that thing's wrecked. Hey, okay, do you have any interesting stories from uh, the audio days? Any? guys do anything wacky or wild on the road? Yeah, um, there was this Chris Troy story that uh, Roger knows pretty Roger, pretty you want to come in for this one? Let's hear it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was really well done. Hi, Roger. Thanks for joining us. So, uh, can't wait to hear this Chris Troy story. Well, we were on a upcoming trip to Miami, and uh, we were staying at this pretty nice hotel, like, right on the beach, pretty much. Yeah. And, uh, it's like one of those hotels where like everything in the hotel room is white. Yeah, like, yeah. You know. <laughs> Nick's already done. That's already so doing. good. <laughs> and uh, we uh, we end up going to some club um, one night. And, uh, he partied his ass off. He got back to uh, the hotel. He was like, I think um, he was sharing a room with Anthony, uh, Anthony Schultz okay, yeah. at the time. Schultz. And uh, I guess in the middle of the night, Chris woke up, he's still drunk, had to take a shit, and like basically um, like tried to find his way to like the bathroom, but didn't make it. So pretty much pressed up against the wall, no. shit on the wall, all over the floor. But like he still had his pants on, and he pulled his pants partially down. Oh. That's like a dumb shit. So, like, yeah, <laughs> shit into his pants, <laughs> shit all on the floor. And then, like, Roger was done, climbed back into bed. Again, like, everything in the hotel was, like, super no. nice and all white. Called back to bed, went to sleep, woke up in the morning. He was like, oh no, what happened? Took his blankets off his bed, kind of, like, wiped up his shit off the floor or whatever, and then threw everything out the window into the atrium of the hotel, which is pretty much, like, the, the center of the fucking hotel. And then and you then, realize that after? Or? Then with the note for the housekeeper, like, sorry, I had an accident. And they're like, uh, didn't say anything to any of us or whatever. We come back from, like, we went, like, I was skating all day long, came back, and uh, the person working in the front desk was all like, what the fuck happened there? Like, I've been working in. I've been in the Should she actually say that? I've been in the hotel business for 20 plus years. I have never, ever seen anyone destroy a room like that. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then she tells me, I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And Chris is like, dude, I had an accident. Like, it was ridiculous. Hey, can you tell us about 
pissing on a ledge while Sierra Feller was trying to skate it. Yeah, we were just we were stuck at a spot uh, for like four hours, and everyone was over it. I thought it'd be funny just to piss on the ledge, and I think you know everyone thought it was funny except for Sierra, of course. But because he's the one trying the trick. He still tried it after that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he ever made it, but it was supposed to be funny. Yeah. But it, yeah, it didn't turn out that Wasn't way. Wasn't well received. Yeah, whatever. Like mid sesh, he's trying to drink his water. Not mid sesh. We're talking four and a half <clears throat> hours deep, and we're like, yeah. we're on a trip for a short amount of time, and we're stuck at a crappy warm up ledge spot. Yeah. That, I mean, all honesty, Sierra, you wouldn't be able to use that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not being you a dick. To like, a, you were trying to do him a solid there. <laughs> it's all right. We're homies now, so. Yeah. Yeah, Speaking of was, which. Um, You've probably heard, you've probably gotten word back about our episode with Slash, right? Oh yeah, that was, that was a gem. Did you, <laughs> did see, you it? see it? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to, where to go yeah, like, with like, this. Uh, yeah, I mean, that did was pretty unbelievable. Did you cut a rail, I guess is my first question. No, that's, that's the most jacked up part is like, <laughs> people started telling me about this, whatever, weekend buzz episode, and I'm like. This week, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, was like right when we started. We were yeah. new yeah. back then. And I watched it and I was like, I was a little confused because that happened like, a couple of years before, yeah, and I've like skated with the guy, hung out with him. Me, him, John Gowen have gone and got coffee together, and like, you know, like when it initially happened too, like, I got his number from a friend. I called him to clear it up because that's like a pretty lame thing to happen. Yeah, and <laughs> apparently it wasn't cleared up, but I don't know. It, yeah, that sucks to be called out for something like that when. Like I ain't even been, to, I've never been to this stupid spot. So you never have you talked to him since that episode? No, I haven't seen him since. Is it? Do you but think it'll be awkward when you see each other? I'm, I have photos of you guys hanging out in the back yeah. of my car, like old times. I, I don't think it'll be awkward. Yeah, like, I would I, hope not. I don't know. Hopefully, if he sees me, he'll say what up, and he's just gonna pass stupid bullshit. But. <laughs> For some reason, I've got called out for cutting other rails too, like cutting oh, that, cu cutting out El Toro. You think you're just nocturnal cutting rails? I don't know, but like, he was actually there when the piece got cut out of El Toro. Yeah. Not me. Like, you know, so I've actually like, heard, and I don't even really, I don't even really hang out with your friends, yeah. and I don't even really hang out with you. But I've heard, yeah, you know, cut rails before. People love to start drama. I don't know. Yeah. It wouldn't bother me, man, if I heard. Somebody did a trick on something and they cut it up so nobody else could do that. Like, fuck no, I think I, well, the, the slash story was so that Brian couldn't land his trick, so that he couldn't go do his trick. Yeah, yeah. But but what, what's trying a trick. But this is like the back. funniest part is like uh, that was like a couple years after, and, and a couple <laughs> years after the rail got cut, or a couple years. Yeah, and he came on this and it was pissed at me. Like, uh, did you cut the rail? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. oh, you could go get it now. He could have got it. Whatever, two and a half years ago. Oh, that's what's when up. the rail got. So what's the problem? He can, he's still go get it. Uh, I don't know. That should actually happen to me before though. I mean, the rail didn't get cut off, but somebody hid some shit so I couldn't skate it. Really? Oh yeah, and I fucking cut. I grabbed it and blew that shit up. It's <laughs> check this out. <laughs> Back in my Philly days, like there was this barrier that I. Get it. I've had covers of magazines on, fucking all this shit. Oh, right? that, that that barrier. Plastic barrier. Mm -hmm. That's because I was I used to hang out with Ryan G all the time. And uh, yeah, geez, I told, awesome. yeah, I told G like, hey, we should get one of them big Jersey barriers, you know, yeah. and drag it down to Love or whatever. And then like months go by, I even forgot about it. But then I seen a photo of Papalardo doing a tail side on a barrier, so I call up G who shot it. I said, hey, where do you where do you get that barrier? I was thinking New York or something. He was like, uh, he was real shady about it. <laughs> and he told me that they found a barrier, Papalardo and Polhowski found a barrier, but they 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 made G like take it and hide it. Right, oh. so I couldn't skate it. That was a specific word, so I couldn't skate it. Wow. I said, take me to the barrier. So we went there and they threw it behind this, like, uh, all this iron fence. I went home and got my saws off, cut that shit out, pulled the barrier, <laughs> took it, like, pushed it down the road, 16 blocks to love, and, Whoa. and shot. My first photo on it was, I think it was a back nose blunt on it from uh -huh. off the tile. Then took it to City Hall and put it down to six. And then even brought it to the X Games and they skated it at the Real Street X Games. Cause I was like, fuck that, man. Like, you guys gonna hide that shit. And I blew it out, too. Like, X yeah. Games. Like, shoe boxes, colors. <laughs> like, dude, I, that barrier got blown out, but it was specifically because they hit it. And I thank them for that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, motivated you, right? They gave me like six months worth of coverage. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah.
Go back to fucking Wisconsin and fucking die. I fucking hate that guy. I don't care. Oh my god. <laughs>